called to worship. Called to worship. So when I began to just, just, I had to get in a place where I had to just really just begin to get lost in his presence and ask him, God, what are you wanting me to tell your people? And like I said before, like um, pastor said it, it's a lifestyle. It's not just something you do on Sunday when you come to church. It's not just something you do when you want him to answer your prayers, but it's something you need to be doing consistently. It's something you need to be doing continually. It's calling on God in worship. We need to be worshiping him with our lifestyle and everything that we do, we should be worshiping God. And as I begin to just reflect on this and just worship God and just seek his face, he reminded me of being, I talk a lot at my job because that's where I am. And while I was at my old job, I was there and I knew it, some things would happen and it took me getting to a place where I had to just get lost in his presence. In order for attitudes to shift, in order for things to happen, I had to go into my worship mode. I had to sit at my desk and begin to worship, or I had to step away and get lost in worship. Why? Because when we worship, it shifts the atmosphere. So if you're already living in worship, then your atmosphere around you will be shifted. But we have to be walking in that. And a lot of times we get fearful, we get doubtful, and we're afraid. Who's watching? What's going on? But if we're living for God, if we're going to worship him in spirit and in truth, it doesn't matter who's watching me. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what things may look like. I'm going to worship him in spite of what I'm going through. So the theme scripture we, we have is John 4:24. John 4, 24, and I'll actually start at verse 23 because I've been reading it and there's a few key points that I want to point out to you. So John chapter 4, verse 23, we'll start there. It said, but the hour is coming and now has come when the true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Go back to that one. We're going to stop for a second. It said the hour's coming and now has come. A lot of times we're waiting and waiting and say, oh, I'll get right when tomorrow. I'll get right in a little bit. And uh, there's some things that when we, when we come to God, a lot of times we don't allow him to take all of us. But we're trying to do a little something, you know, because that's my normal routine. I lie a little bit. That's my normal routine. And that's what we may say. But that's not who God created us to be. And when you become a new creation, that means you only shake off all your old baggage, all your old self, and you're going to begin to walk in newness. You're going to allow him to change your mind. You're going to allow him to show you who you're supposed to be. So with us worshiping him, the time has come now. We shouldn't be waiting for tomorrow. We shouldn't be waiting for next week. But now is the time for us to worship him with all that we have. A lot of times we want God to bless us right now, but we're not taking time to worship him right now. We're saying, God, I will worship you after I see the breakthrough, after I get the promotion. But we, sometimes we have to praise him on the way to the breakthrough. As Annis is waiting for her healing, she has to praise him on the way to the healing. Because how do you know, how many of you know that in the midst of you worshiping, in the midst of you praising, in the midst of you just pressing into his presence, that's when things begin to shift. That's when, I, that's when things begin to break. That's when he begins to fix things. Because you're at a point where you're saying, God, I know you're going to do it, and I'm going to praise you in spite of what I may feel like. I'm going to praise you in spite of what it may look like. I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to worship you. So we must worship him in spirit and in truth. God began to speak to me about truth. Sometimes it's hard for us to hear the truth. But that's what God longs for us to have is the truth. And a lot of us are so blinded from what people have said in our past that when God tells us the truth, that we are made unique for a reason, that he designed us, he handpicked us, and that he would qualify us, we, it's hard for us to accept that because we've been so confused, so lost. 
but he desires us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So God, I'm bringing everything that I have. I'm giving you all of me. Why? Because you sent your son to give me all of him. He didn't just halfway stop and say, you know what, God, I'm done with this. No, he said, not my will, but yours be done. He, he asked, he said, God, if this cup could pass for me. But God, he, he still allowed himself to go and pay the price for us because he loved us that much. And we need to be truthful with God because that's what he seeks. Go to the next verse. It said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So as I begin to study this, I want to look up worship. Because there's a few different things God showed me. It says to regard with respect, honor, devotion, an act of expressing such reverence. So when I looked that up, God said, devotion. I said, okay, God, what does that mean? It says, char- it says characterized by loyalty, consistent, dedicated, faithful. What are you devoted to? That's where your worship will be. If you're, if you're dedicated or devoted to your marriage, but you don't have God in it, then you're just worshiping one another. But if you're dedicated and, wor- and, and, and worshiping God, then everything else will fall into place. What are you devoted to? We have to be devoted to, to God. And when you're devoted to God, you give him everything. You give him everything, all that you have. Not just halfway doing it, but all that you have. You know, it's interesting that Chase had Markayla up here and Mariana up here, and I was up here yesterday with her little skit. And when we were at home last night, Kayla said, you know, one thing that stood out to me is that I honor God by honoring my parents. We have to remember, what are you giving your devotion to, your honor to, your respect to? If you're not respecting your boss, you're still disobeying God. But when you go and you're doing things in excellence, yes, this is my job. Yes, they're in leadership over me, but I'm going to do this in reverence to God. I'm going to do this unto God. That's what you have to be dedicated to. That's where your focus has to be, is I'm doing this unto God. So as I begin to just talk to God about worship, he began to show me that worship is all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. We hear them talk about worship. And so one of the first scriptures we're going to go to is Exodus chapter 20. And we'll start at verse 3. Exodus chapter 20. And we'll start at verse 3. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. A lot of times we set up other gods and we may not know it. But God tells us not to have anything else above him. We get caught up in material things and we say, oh, no, I, this is just something I really like. But if you're not set aside, uh, set aside time for God, then that thing can be a God in your life. It's what you're giving your time to, like we said, your devotion to. And when you're worshiping God, he should be the only big G God in your life. We shouldn't have anything else. So if you feel that, oh, I'm spending too much time doing this, then you need to shift that. It was interesting that um, God reminded me of this. I was doing something with Markayla and and. She reminded me, she said, you know, a lot of times when we watch movies, you're not even watching them with this. You're on your phone. And I was like, oh, I was counting that as spending time, but I'm not really spending time. A lot of times we do that with God. We say we're spending time with God, but your mind is elsewhere. You're still on Facebook. You're supposed to be reading the Bible. Oh, I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading these scriptures people post. Is that you really reading the Bible? What are you devoted to? 
What are you spending your time doing? We have to remember that we're supposed to worship him. The next scripture is still in Exodus. We're going to go to chapter 34. And we'll go to verse 14. It says, for you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Some of us didn't know that that God is jealous. He don't want no one else taking all of our time. But a lot of times, we, we will spend our time doing everything else. And be like, God, you're not looking at me. God, you're not spending time with me. You keep blessing them and blessing them. But what about me? He said, but are you spending time with me? I've been waiting to bless you. I've been waiting to to move, but you're not even recognizing that I'm there, that I'm trying to help you. And we forget the God we serve is a jealous God. So we need to spend all our time with him. Whatever we do, we should be worshiping God. When I go into the grocery store, I should be worshiping God. When it, it's, it's how you act. Because remember that wherever we go, I think Sister Darshin said it, we're the only Jesus that people may see. So we have to remember that our lifestyle is basically a billboard, showing people who we serve. So if I'm not acting right, if my attitude isn't right, that's the Jesus they think we serve which isn't right. God reminded me of, um, I started this new job, I've been there two weeks, and one of my coworkers, we began to just talk, and we were sharing different scriptures, and we were just talking. She said, you know what? She said, I just feel like I gotta come and confess something to you. She's like, there's something about you that makes me just wanna just have you pray for me, what makes you wanna just just talk to you, because I feel like you're, I don't know what it is. I feel like you're, you're in leadership. There's something about you. I said, I, well, I'm an I'm assistant pastor at my church. She said, you know what? I knew it. God is shining all through you. And I, I, she's like, I knew it. She's like, I just feel his presence whenever you're around. She's like, and there's something about you because she said I was praying and asking God to help me to be a light. And I needed someone to hear to help me to continue to, to, to fight for him, to continue to be a light. Because I slip up and I mess up and I get frustrated and my attitude's ugly. She's like, but I needed someone to be here to walk along the way with me. And I prayed and then the next week you came. I was like, that's God. That's God. And I just thank God because I have to remember that I'm a light. That there's people watching. There's people watching. You don't know what they went through last week. You don't know what they went through that they might have past hurts. So they may have turned their back on the church, but if you're living right and you're showing them the love of Christ, that's going to draw them back in to say, you know what? Maybe everybody isn't like that. Maybe, maybe I, I didn't really know God for myself, but we have to continue just to live a lifestyle of worship that will point them back to God. The next scripture we're going to go to is Psalm 99. Psalm 99, and we will go to verse 5. It says, exalt the Lord, O God, and worship at his footstool. He is holy. I love when we sing that song, exalt the Lord. Because sometimes you have to give him praise. You have to remember that he should be exalted. You have to remember that, yes, he's your friend, but he's not just your homie. Oh, hey, we're going to just kick it and I'm just going to talk to you. No, he should be exalted because he's the one that is keeping you alive and well. He's the one that has brought you out of darkness and into his light. He's the one that's there when everyone else has turned their back. He's the one right there to help you. He's the one right there. When I was like, Lord, okay, I want a new job. I'm sick of being here, and I, I, I need a way out. He said, just let me hold your hand. I'll guide you. I said, but Lord, look, I applied for this position. I should be able to get it. And I'm thinking I'm trying to move out of my own flesh, trying to do it on my own. And, and God said, just let me hold your hand and let me guide you through it. I said, but God, man, I, I'm going to go on this interview. It's going to be good. Go on the interview. Nothing happens. I'm like, Lord, what happened? I'm trusting you. He said, just hold my hand and let me guide you through it. And so once I said, okay, God, I'll just worship you in the hallway while I'm waiting for the door to open. And as I began to worship him, 
and trust him and said, okay, let me just be a light where I am right now. Let me be impactful where I am right now because there's a reason you have me here. And so while I was there and just worshiping God and just trying to be a light, different people from different departments would talk to me and they'd be like, man, I was listening to this message today. I'm like, you ain't never said nothing about God or anything like that. They're like, yeah, I'd be listening to T.D. Jakes and this and that. And I was like, okay, that's good. And so we're talking, then someone else come. Man, I just really want you to pray about this. I'm like, okay. And I'm praying for them. And I'm like, Lord, okay, so you have me here still for a reason. I understand now. And I was just trying to just go because I was antsy and I wanted to get out. But we have to remember that God's timing is the best timing. So when you begin to just, okay, God, I'm just going to worship you in the midst of everything. Worship you while I'm waiting. That's the hardest thing, to worship God while we're waiting. Because a lot of times we're like, God, I want it to happen right now. And I would love to go to this position, and I love to make this amount of money. And he's saying, just hold my hand and just let me guide you along the way. And when you begin to just, okay, God, I'm just going to trust you. And as you worship and you trust him, he said, okay, it's time to go. I said, okay. And I just began to talk to one of the ladies. I got a new position that I, or a new task that I was helping with. And I'm thinking, okay. I'm just helping out doing this, but I kind of started to like that kind of work, and I was like, this is interesting, and God kept saying, it's time to go, and I said, okay, and so the lady I had just met that I started helping, it was opening the door for where I was supposed to be, because that was the lead at my new position, and she said, you know what, you're totally capable of doing this, and, I, and your worth ethic, I could see is, is awesome from when I work with you on other projects. So now I go to this new job, she's my lead. She's the one training me. And she's like, I, stop stressing, you got this. So all this week and all last week, she's like, you know what, you caught on faster than anyone else. I see you're able to handle the work. And, and she's like, you know what, there's just, we're thankful that you're here. We're so thankful that you're here. When you begin to just say, okay, God, in your timing, I'm going to trust you. I'm just going to hold your hand and watch you do whatever you want to do. Everything begins to fall into place. But you have to trust him. You have to worship him in the midst of the test, in the midst of everything. I'm going to go to Psalm 66 and verse 4. Psalm 66, verse 4. It says, all the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall praise, they shall sing praise to your name. Selah. We must worship God and continue to sing praises to him. Not just in the good times or not just in the bad times. We, need, we must worship him at all times. Even when you don't feel like it, even when you're tired, even when you're frustrated, we have to begin to just worship. Worship. You know, it's interesting, we, I'll be in the car at Marquise and someone will swerve and almost hit us and he'll be like, thank you, God. Because we could have been taken out. Instead of him saying some cuss words or honking his horn or being upset, he's just like, thank you, God, for keeping us. He wants to say something, I could tell, but he's like, thank you, Lord, for keeping us. We have to remember to keep our eyes on God at all times, continue to praise him in the midst of everything at all times. Don't forget how good he is. And how wonderful his name is. I saw this, um, I guess it's the acronym for worship. It's the W says, wait on the Lord. O is offer your lives as living sacrifice. R is rest in his presence. S, sing to him. H, humble yourselves before him. I is intimacy with God. And P is please him. That's the hardest one at the end, is to please him. Because a lot of times we want to please ourselves. We want to please ourselves. And I think H, a lot of times, is hard too, to humble yourselves. Because we're like, God, I am not going to do it. Yes, you are going to do it. Just step back and do what I told you to do. And W, the first one, is, is really hard because wait. Nobody likes to wait. My kids used, I got to wait. Yeah, you got to wait. And they did, Kayla used to, it was funny because she used to always say that to grandma. She'd be like, just wait. I got to wait. 
She wouldn't want to wait. And us, we still have that childlike nature. We don't want to wait. But if we just wait on God, then he'll begin to make things happen. And if we, we have to learn to wait in his presence, God be like, I, I had a word for you, but you kept moving. You didn't stay in my presence long enough just to hear what I wanted to tell you. You're so anxious to, okay, I did my prayer for today. I got to get going. He said, just wait. Sometimes we have to just wait and just worship. Just wait and just begin to sing to him and just allow him to speak to us. Don't get so busy and so caught up that you can't hear him speak. Because a lot of times we'll go through different stages and we'll say, well, well, God hasn't really been talking to me. I don't know what's going on. Are you waiting? Are you sitting in his presence and saying, okay, God, I'm not moving until you speak to me. I'm not going to go anywhere until you speak to me. I'm not going to go and take this job promotion until you speak to me. I'm not going to do what it is that I want to do until I hear you say, okay, that's where you need to be. Okay, that's what you need to do. Okay, that's what you need to say. Because a lot of times we will get in positions and we don't want to wait. So we're just going to say whatever comes out our mouth. And a lot of times that'll mess us up. That'll mess us up. Even sometimes I find myself, if I get mad or I get frustrated, I'll say something that I'm like, oh, God's like, if you would have just waited, I would just work it out for you. But we have to learn to wait on God. We have to wait on God. I'm going to go to, I'm almost done, don't worry. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and we'll start at verse 1. This is a story a lot of us know. And maybe some of us don't really know it or haven't seen it from this perspective. So we're going to read it. I'm not going to read all of it. I will par uh, paraphrase part of it the way that God gives it to me because a lot of times when I'm reading the Bible, I say it like before I see it in like a movie form or a video form. And it's interesting because I'd be laughing like, Lord, you are so funny. But it's like I hear him talking and sometimes it's like it's narrated through Marquise's voice. So I'd be laughing, like reading stuff. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, because I could hear Marquise saying stuff. And he'd be like, really? But it's just interesting. It's funny. So it's very interesting. But um, we're going to read this. I'm going to start at chapter one. Or chapter three, sorry. Verse one. Nebuchadnezzar king... Uh, the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width was six cubits. And he set it up in plain of Dora in the province of Babylon. The king Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps and the administrators and the governors and the counselors and the treasurers and the judges and the magistrates and all the officials of the providence to come to the dedication of the image of king uh, Im, uh, image which Nebuchadnezzar king or the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up so the satraps and the administrators and the governors and the counselors and the treasurers and the judges and the magistrates and all the officials of the provinces gathered together in dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried out to you, uh, to, sorry, to you, it is commanded, O peoples and nations and languages, that the time sorry, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the pestery, the, huh? Psaltery. The symphony and all kinds of music. You shall fall down and worship the golden image the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship um, shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when the people had heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the symphony, and all the 
all kinds of music, all the people and nations, languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at the time, at that certain time, the Chaldeans came forward and accused and the accusers of the Jews. They spoke and said, King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the harp, the flute, the lyre, the psaltery, in uh, symphony and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the bur- cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So stopping there. So he has the king has this big old statue made of gold, and he said, whenever I blow this, or whenever they start sounding their music, basically. You got to bow down and worship him. And how many of you have some haters back in the day? Or maybe you have some haters now. And they, they will go and, and say, hey, he ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing. Maybe you have that one person at your job that's watching your every move, and if you don't do something right, ah, oh, she, didn't, she didn't put a number one on this thing that's supposed to be on there. They, they're quick to, to judge you. So they're watching you. Well, that's what I, I'm taking from this. So they're watching to see if they're going to bow down. They know that they serve the true and living God, but they're like, oh, they're not bowing down? I'm about to tell the king. So basically, they go and tell the king they're not bowing down. And it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And... We're going to jump down because I like what they say back to them when they're brought before the king. We are going to jump down to 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answer and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Basically, we don't have to answer to you. They're still being respectful. But we're, they're saying, we don't have to answer this. Keep going. It says, if that, sorry, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fire, burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. So basically, my God is bigger, and he is more than able to deliver us if you decide to throw us in there. So the king said, okay, bind them up. See, and that's one thing I didn't catch is that they bound them up and then threw them in there. So not just so they could be free in there moving around dying, but he was like, let's bind them up so that they can even run out or do anything if they wanted to. So they bind them up and they put them in there because they said they're not going to bow down. And it's only three of them. And they're in there. And the king, even the guys that were going to push them in there, they died because it's that hot. So they're in there bound up. And immediately he sees them worshiping and walking around in there. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Didn't we only throw three of them in there? And they're like, yeah, only three. He's like, well, I see four in there. And they're all walking around. See, I don't know about you, but I have to be reminded that when I'm going through a test, when I'm going through a battle, that God gets in there with me. He doesn't just leave you to go through it by yourself. A lot of times you may feel like you're going through it by yourself, but when you begin to worship God, he's in the situation with you. He's there to hold your hand. He's there to guide you along the way. He's there to continue to give you that extra pep that you need to keep going. He's there to help you not to give up. Not to back down, not to say, okay, let's just go on and bow down. No, but you're there to worship the true and living God. And he's going through this situation with you. So when I read this and when God brought it to me, it reminded me that with worship, we can't back down. We can't get frustrated. We can't give in and say, okay, I'm just going to take the easy way out and I'm just going to do things my own way. No, I'm going to not settle, but I'm going to live on the word of God. And he said that he would deliver me. He said that he would never leave 
me nor forsake me. So I'm going to stand on this word, and I know he's going to pay the bill. I know he's going to help fix relationships. I know he's going to heal, set free, and deliver. I know that he's going to come through because God will step in the situation with me and help me through it. He'll step in and give you that extra strength that you need to continue to complete the task. He'll step in and fight your case because he's a mighty God. He's a faithful God. So like Pastor said earlier, worship is not just singing, but it's how we live our lives. We have to remember it's how we live our lives. So stop and think to yourself, how am I living my life? Am I worshiping God in everything that I do? Or am I just worshiping God when I'm in these four walls where I'm with someone else so I feel comfortable, okay, I can worship? But when I get out there, I'm cussing like a sailor. I get out there, I'm on Facebook doing any, every kind of thing. When I'm out there, I'm just doing whatever I want to do. Because mm, nobody sees me. Nobody's at my job with me. No, God's with you. He sees everything you do. Everything that you do. So we have to remember to worship God at all times. One of the quotes I found, it says, we do not worship God. We do not worship God because... Life is good. We worship God because he is good. A lot of times we just want to worship him in the good times. But let me remind you that none of us would be here if it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God. You say, well, what do you mean? I was healthy. I was always a good person. But you can die walking down the street. You can just wake up or not wake up one day. You could have maybe been bullied in school and it go a little too far and you wouldn't have been here. But God kept all of us. So we have to continue just to worship him because he's worthy. We have to continue to worship him in spite of. We have to continue to worship him because he alone should be worshiped. So with this being the answer to the call, God has spoken on all of our lives, not just in worship, but in our lifestyle, he's called all of us to do something. And you say, well, I don't know what he wants me to do. Just live his word. That's the first start. Just live his word. You say, well, well, okay, well, I'm not preaching. I'm not teaching. I like to pray, but I'm a little shy. I, I can't be, I'm not going to be in the, in the forefront. I like playing the background. Well, you know what? God can use you in the background. He can use you anywhere. Because I used to say, okay, I'll just play in the background and I'll just do what he wants me to do. And, and so as I began to just, okay, God, I'll just be in, I don't need to be in the front. Let me just worship you where I'm at. And as I began to worship where I was, I began to just pray more and more. And he said, okay, that's what you're supposed to be doing. I already told you from the beginning that you are an intercessor, so continue to have that mindset. Continue just to use that. And as I began to use that, then God said, okay, now it's time for you to go here. But you have to be faithful and you have to continue just to worship him and continue just to praise him with your lifestyle and answer the call he's put on all of us. Some of us, he's told us something. We're a little scared. We're like, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how it's all going to come to pass. God reminded me that, like I said before, I shared this before, that I had a dream before we started this church. And in the dream, I think someone was, we were, there was, someone was there and we were praying for someone. And we're praying for this, I was praying for this person and I'm looking at my friends saying, okay, I need you guys to help me pray for them. And they are like, nope. And the person that came and helped me pray was Annis. And we just began to pray and cast the demon out of the person. And afterwards I was like, God, I don't understand this. He said, they can't go with you where you're going. But he had Annis there because he knew we were about to be in this church and we were about to be together and we were about to be linked up. And a lot of times we're afraid and we're scared and we say, God, how am I going to do it? But you have to take the I out of it because not me. I, I, Precious is not going to do anything unless God says so. A lot of my, uh, my in-laws know and a lot of my family know I'm not one that will be out there just doing stuff. But if God tells me, okay, I'll do it. 
And a lot of times I'm still a little hesitant, but I'm learning to accept the call he's put on my life. I'm learning to walk in the boldness he's given me. In spite of what I may feel, in spite of how I may feel a little scared or feel like I'm not qualified, he's reminding me a lot of times that I will qualify you. Just go and be the vessel and let me work through you. And when I allow him to do that, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time. God, help us to continue just to worship you with all that we have. Help us to continue just to answer your call that you place on our lives, that we will be vessels that you work through. God, that we'll worship you with all that we have, that we'll understand that it's a lifestyle. No matter where we are or what we're doing, that we would worship you and you alone. That we'll worship you with all that we have, God. God, that we would allow you to take up our time, take up our priority, Lord God, that you would be the only God in our life. That we would humble ourselves, seek your face, spend intimacy time with you, God. Time worshiping you at your footstool. And not just in when we come here, Lord God, but we'll worship you in all that we do and everything that we do. We would give your name all the glory and all the praise. God, that we'll learn how to worship while we're waiting. As hard as it may be, we would worship while we're waiting. And that we would understand that you have the final say. God, we just thank you so much, Lord God. We ask that you to touch all the speakers that came forth. Touch all those that use their gifts, Lord God. That you would continue to bless them for being obedient, Lord God. God, we ask that you continue to move and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen.